My name is Captain Richard Mitchell. I'm a uh, pilot in the Air National Guard. I've been flying the uh, LC-130 for approximately four and a half years with the 109th Airlift Wing out of Schenectady, New York. We fly this bird primarily in the polar regions, so we're flying it up around the uh, Arctic area in uh, northern Canada, Greenland, and also down in the southern, the Antarctic area. The primary mission is to support science around the world and also to give the military uh, airlift capability in regions that are uh, very hard to get to. Let's say that's the easiest way to put it. So we uh, take the aircraft and um, airlift anything from scientific supplies, cargo, people, fuel, and uh, take them out to regions such as the South Pole or uh, regions up in the ice cap in Greenland. It's kind of a multi-purpose aircraft. It goes anywhere that uh, it's required to go and uh, it does operate on a multinational platform. Um, we do a lot of civilian airlift with it, so outside that, I can tell you that we've had a myriad of nations on board with us in uh, civilian capacity. This aircraft is a blast to fly. Um, first off, it's a crew of six. So when you put six people together in a tin can and you send them halfway around the world, you're going to come up with some really good stories. But that same crew of six puts together a complement of people that are professionals that without them, this plane wouldn't run. So if you're talking about the two pilots that are up front, that are always updating each other on the situation, flying the plane, we do a lot of hand flying this aircraft. And then you have the flight engineer, who's our system specialist, that when we're in a tough jam or when something's going wrong, that's the person that we look to to help us get out of that situation. You have the navigator who walks us through some of the worst weather in the world and gets us home safe every single day. And then you have the two load masters. Now, the load masters are in the back of the plane. They're still in the headset with us every single day but they are the ones that get the job done. So we're called a four fan trash can hauler. Well, I can tell you this, they're the ones that make sure the cargo is on, loaded, and off properly. They take care of the people, they take care of everything else that's going on. Hi, my name's Matt Pombino. Uh, I'm the load master here, uh, LC-130. Uh, we're out of Stratton, Stratton, New York, uh, Scotia Air National Guard Base. Uh, this is a car compartment, 41 feet long by six feet wide, nine feet high. We carry uh, up to 90 passengers. We can carry six pallets, a uh, total payload of up to 45,000 pounds, depending on fuel and a uh, number of other factors. Um, we bring cargo on, people on, and get it off. I'm the person that makes it all happen back here. We got chains, straps, uh, a lock system in the cargo compartment. The dual rail locks, you can see here, locks in pallets. Um, besides that, we, uh, we fly around Antarctica, Greenland, and uh, we make the mission happen back here. When you get out to the, the polar regions, there are smaller aircraft that come in, they can haul passengers. They can haul a little bit of gas, but they can't haul a whole lot of stuff. So uh, some of the cargo that we haul in the back are such large dimensions and uh, extreme capacity that they won't fit into anything else. Uh, for, to give you an example, I've hauled helium doors that are the size of the cargo compartment itself. So if you look at the back of the plane from where the door is all the way back to the tail of the aircraft, if you can imagine a container so big that it barely fits in the entire capacity. That's some of the cargo that we haul into and out of polar regions. And we're the only ones that are capable of doing that, specifically because we have snow skis. The one main thing that makes us different from any other C-130 is, uh, of course, the snow skis. So we have three skis, the nose ski and two main skis. They operate off of one uh, hydraulic system on the plane. And they are independent of the landing gear. Uh, what that means is, just like today, when we're coming into concrete, we can raise the skis up and put the landing gear down. If we're going into the snow, we can put the skis down with the landing gear down. Now when the gear comes up, the skis actually come all the way down and extend, and then the whole landing gear system comes up together. So they operate in three different positions. So the areas that we go to, there's no runways, uh, there's nothing except for snow. So we are capable of landing on solid ice runways, we call uh, blue ice or white ice runways. We're capable of landing on skiways, which are Essentially, they're groomed snow surfaces that are flagged so that we can land out there when we're in instrument conditions. Uh, by instrument conditions, I mean uh, we can't see uh, very far in front of us or we can't see around us. It's uh, technically called IMC, and uh, we can use the radar system on board to guide us all the way down to the ground. So outside that, we have the blue ice runways, the white ice runways, the skiways. We also have ski landing areas, which would be a sub-surface it's a service other than a ski way, meaning that uh, it may be groomed or it may not be groomed. People have actually laid out trash bags of ice so that we can kind of tell where the perimeter is that's good. 
Uh, and then uh, outside that would be open snow. And open snow is the most fun. That's the best place to go. So out in Antarctica, occasionally we find ourselves in a brand new location where nobody's been. And uh, scientists will say, I need to land there because I want to pick up certain things, I want to do certain experiments, or I need to be there for, uh, to pre-position to go somewhere else. And so when we land out in the open snow regions, it's, uh, it's pristine in some cases, meaning uh, you can land and it's just soft, powdery snow that's been out there and recently uh, deposited. In other cases, you can land on snow that's so hard it feels just like concrete. And there's large sastrugi. Sastrugi are large ice accumulations that the, the wind builds up and then it cuts into it. And the sastrugi are so large that it feels just like driving a Lamborghini through a parking lot and going over every single speed bump that's out there. All right, so the uh, C-130H model, or in this case, the LC-130H model, in very rough dimensions, it's approximately 100 feet long, about 40 feet tall, and about 130 feet wide. The skis themselves are about 20 feet long, and they weigh almost 2,000 pounds each on the main skis, and about 1,000 pounds on the nose ski. Now, one of the most unique features of our plane is that we still operate with JADO. The JADO bottles you see here, there's four on this side and four on the other side. Uh, we use them in high altitude situations, anywhere from 10,000 all the way up to 14,000 feet on the ground. And we also use them in open snow situations. Uh, so when we need to get the plane off the ground very quickly, or when we don't have enough thrust with our four engines, this is kind of like adding a fifth engine. Now, unlike uh, other C-130 demonstration teams, like Fat Albert, when they use JADO, they have a lot of thrust because they're at sea level. When we're using these JADO bottles, we're at extremely high altitudes, so we don't get a whole lot of thrust. In fact, we only get anywhere from seven to 10 knots out of these things, and we get anywhere from seven to 14 seconds of burn time. So it's not a whole lot of time for us to get the plane off the ground. In fact, when we do get the plane off the ground, we're actually very close to stall. So uh, it's a uh, very tricky process, and again, it comes back to crew coordination, the six people working together to make sure that the plane is in a safe configuration and flying at all times. All right, so this is a basic H3 layout for a, a uh, C-130. Uh, we fly three variants here in the 109th. We fly an H2, uh, what we call an H2 and a half, and then this is the H3, it's the newest model. Uh, you'll see the control instruments up front. These are all engine instruments over here to the side that are hooked up to all four engines and throttles. And then down here is our macaw system. This is a warning system that tells us uh, some of the systems on the health of some of the systems on the plane. And then if you look up top, you'll see this is our fuel panel, and again, more engine instruments. And then up top is, uh, even beyond that, is the electrical system all through here. And this is our heating and de-icing systems as well. So this has been a tour of the LC-130. Thanks for following me around the plane and taking a look at this aircraft.